Have you ever had a day when you wake up, get out of bed, put on your alligator skin socks and swim to school? Chances are you have, and chances are it was a dream. Sleep is a predictable pattern every night. Each sleep cycle lasts about 90 minutes, beginning with NREM sleep where your bodily activity is at the absolute minimum. Four types of brain waves course through our brain, each one leading into another. Stage 1, alpha waves mingle with beta waves. This means that you're going unconscious. Stage 2, alpha waves dominate your existing beta waves and send you into a deeper sleep. Stage 3 is called slow wave sleep, where 20% of your brain waves are delta waves. Stage 4 begins when 50% is delta waves. After about 40 minutes in stage 4, we regress through the stages, ending up back at stage 1, but this time in REM sleep. The most highly active brain state, your breathing becomes irregular and your body paralyzes itself to keep from damage. While incapacitated, your brain's neurotransmitters are rattled by the high level of dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine, causing intense activity. Now this is where it gets fun. Most people believe that dreams have hidden meanings. Sigmund Freud believed that dreams function to satisfy unconscious sexual and aggressive desires, appearing in two categories, manifest and latent content. Beginning in the 1950s, psychologists began to move away from the Freudian interpretation of dreams. In 1953, Hall proposed a cognitive theory of dreaming, which pretty much means that dreaming is thinking while asleep, which is the backbone of my subject, lucid dreaming. The term lucid dreaming was created by the Dutch psychiatrist and writer Frederick Van Eden and means the dreamer can actively participate in and manipulate imaginary experiences in the dream environment. Lucid dreams can seem real and vivid. Dream consciousness is similar to that of a hallucinating awake subject. Dreams are hallucinatory images triggered by the brainstem are considered to be real even if fantastic. The impulse to accept the experience as real is so strong that the dreamer will often invent a memory or story to cover up an incongruous or unrealistic event in the dream. However, when the dreamer awakens, he or she will realize that it is rather far-fetched. Being able to recognize these events is the first and easiest way to become lucid, as if you can consciously recognize you are in a dream, you may be able to control what happens. It is your own mind after all. Other ways are to keep a dream journal, this helps you remember your dreams, or to even have a check method to see if you can test if you are dreaming or not. Try counting your fingers, you should have 10. Tonight when you go to bed and have a dream, if you don't have 10 fingers, use this as a way to recognize that you are in a dream. Be cautious though, as there is a very high chance once you achieve lucidity, your brain will enter a heightened state and you will wake up. The advantages of achieving lucidity, besides the obvious, are many, as it is even regarded in the medical field as a type of therapy regarding stress and overcoming fears, especially recurring nightmares.